Hey, how's it going? Sebastian Cruz here, head coach of the Elite Physique Academy. Welcome to today's show. Today is part one of Burger Week, and we're gonna react to a couple of traditional burger recipes and finish it with a smart burger recipe. High protein, low calories. Today, we're gonna kick it off with the most epic, binging with Babish's Krabby Patty. Now, Babish likes to recreate iconic foods from TV shows and movies, and today he did what he thought would be a real life interpretation of the Krabby Patty. So to be clear, we're not gonna see if he's a calorie abuser or a calorie G, we're gonna see if Mr. Krabs is being smart with his calories in his burger, or if he's going a little too crazy with the extra cal. So let's buckle up and see what this Krabby Patty's made of. It's time. It's time to finally make the all-time most requested dish on this show, the Krabby Patty. The ingredients of which are laid here before you. Has anyone else really been that curious as to what went inside a Krabby Patty? I mean, watching SpongeBob, it always seemed like it was a pretty basic looking burger. I, I can't say I personally was ever like, wow, I wonder what's inside one. I mean, it looks so weird or unusual, but I guess I I'm in the minority here. Except, of course, the secret ingredient. What is the secret ingredient? Well, I just happen to have some right here. That's right, I've finally cracked the code. After a year of research, I've come to the conclusion that the secret ingredient is a heaping tablespoon of nothing. I like that. It means we're not gonna get bombarded with anything that's just gonna add tons and tons of calories to something that already isn't exactly a salad. So we're going to start by seasoning a store-bought frozen beef patty with salt, pepper, and MSG. Now, some people are saying that it's a crab burger, but Mr. Krabs is a crab. That's pretty horrible and barbaric, even for Nick. When it comes to burgers, what's standard is 80-20. That's pretty fatty when you consider fat as double the cows of protein. So you did not need that oil there. That said, Mr. Krabs probably would have used oil just because flavor is king in the restaurant business, and Mr. Krabs wants to make that money, so at least it's accurate. So once thawed, we're going to prepare our burger much as we would any other burger. Vegetable oil, high heat, cast iron. Then we're going to follow SpongeBob's exact order of assembly, which starts with lettuce on top of the burger, which is a terrible idea. Never do this. I'm doing this for science. Then we're going a single slice of yellow American, single slice of Vidalia onion, tomato. So, so far, just to critique the toppings, lettuce, tomato, knock your socks off. No calories there. I mean, there are, but so minimal. Cheese, hit or miss. High calorie cheese could be almost like 100 calories a slice, a lower one closer to 30. Bet here is using 100 calories. Let's see the condiments. Ketchup, mustard, and the absolute most important part. Do not forget the pickles. You don't want Bubble Bass doing that god awful laugh of his. Top bun. To wrap it off, ketchup, mustard, pretty Gucci. Pickles also a good option, just high in sodium if that's a thing for you. But let's see what else there is. This can't be the whole video. And there you have it, a Krabby Patty with the works. Even kind of looks like that one in the training video, right? Now, as expected, this was a totally delicious burger. MSG makes things taste better. Now, if you want to up the natural umami content of your burger, here's a few ways to do it. The first All right, there you have it. Pretty standard burger, not the worst thing. You could live with it. And if this fills you up, there could be significantly worse things to have a cheat day on. And I'm looking at you, cinnamon bun pancakes. Next up is to make a seasoning out of some natural umami bombs. We're going to start with a bit of bonito flake, which is a shaved dried fish, some dried shiitake mushrooms, some dried kombu, which is a sort of sea kelp, so this seems even more accurate, and a single anchovy. Now this is all sounding pretty fishy, sorry, but rest assured that these will not make... So really like these alternatives to MSG, much more natural, probably a lot more appetizing too. Bonito's a fish, so just, you know, thin fish slices, protein, good fats, love it. Mushroom, very low calorie option, high flavor, love it as well. Kelp, I bet that has pretty much zero calories and a strong taste, so also loving that. And then a singular anchovy, no crazy calories. You'll love to see it. Your burger tastes like seafood. Use a spice grinder like this one to completely powderize these ingredients so they make an easy sprinkling dust for later on. Now onto the burger patty. Umami refers to the unctuousness and savoriness of a dish, so it only makes sense that we'd use some fatty, flavorful cuts of beef. So we're gonna cut equal parts beef, short rib, and chuck steak into one inch. You hate to see it, but he's absolutely right. Fat is flavor. That said, fat is calories, and specifically, lots of calories. There is a ton of fat there, and I'd say maybe a 75-25, 70-30 split is probably more accurate for these. Do not use any additional fats. Yeah, I mean, you really don't need it. 
cubes that we're going to place in the freezer for about 15 minutes along with the blade of a food processor. Pulse in your food processor until you achieve a nice pebbly ground beef. Make sure not to over process your beef or you're going to end up with softballs instead of burgers. Back on That burger patty is looking more pink than it is red. And that's when you know the, the white fat is having a strong effect on the red protein color. This is a fatty patty. Krabby Patty uses a fatty patty. New mommy duty, it's time to address tomatoes. We're going to oven dry our tomatoes in a low oven on a non-stick surface like a sill pat. Drizzle with a little bit of olive oil, sprinkle with a little bit of kosher salt, and place in a 200 degree Fahrenheit oven for about an hour and a half or until they come out wrinkly little prunes like these guys. Next to up the glutamate con- If you're gonna put oil on something, tomatoes is a great choice. If a slice of tomato probably has like five calories. Would they have tasted the same or similar without the oil? I think yes, but just my two cents. Ten of our ketchup, we're going to make a puree of sun-dried tomatoes, add a little bit of olive oil if they're not smooth enough, and combine this with a bit of good old-fashioned ketchup. This is gonna add a few additional megatons to our taste explosion. I mean, if it's already gonna be mixed with ketchup, that's gonna be a very strong impact on the overall taste. I would just use a little bit of that. Instead of the oil, you will save like 80% of the calories. It's already gonna be a strong part of the taste anyways like to additionally amp up your mustard and if you like the taste of yellow miso combine the two last but certainly not least is the issue of cheese we're going to make parmesan cheese crisps by baking grated parmesan at 350 for about 15 minutes season and sear the patties as usual and make sure you remove the burger from the heat before adding your spice powder unless you want to set off every smoke alarm in your zip code we're going to assemble our burger properly this time starting with the patty followed by Calorie wise, I mean, it looked like it was a lot of cheese, so really just the poison is in the dose there. Looked very pretty though. And as for the bun, burger cooking it in vegetable oil. Bun, fine. Burger, very excessive. Very, very unnecessary. Um, that said, it is pretty typical, so don't blame Mr. Krabs for that. Or, I mean, Babish. This is Babish's version caramelized onions, one of our oven dried tomatoes, a bit of our miso mustard, a bit of our sun dried tomato ketchup, this stuff is awesome, a parmesan cheese crisp, and last, where it belongs, a handful of iceberg lettuce. Top your burger and slice in half for that cross section. You guys know me, I don't clean my plate unless it's really, really good, especially because these things are going straight to my thighs. Actually not too bad. The fats and the high calorie elements came from the burger patty and the cheese itself. Is that super unreasonable? I don't think so. And then when it came to the condiments, the lettuce, tomato, the spreads he made, those are all extremely, extremely reasonable additions. Really no complaints. Before I blow up. Oh. Well, I guess that's the video. So yeah, pros, he was very heavy on spice and thinking about flavors, but not necessarily thinking of cop-outs. When I say cop-outs, I mean just butter, oils, sugars. Just throwing that in with reckless abandon. If you want to talk about the cons, he used the fattier cuts of meat and that really does add up. Going from that 80-20 to something probably like set closer to 70-30 makes a big difference calorie wise. That said, is it totally out of this world in the context of the burger? Not really. So final verdict, this was well done from a calorie standpoint. He did not give you a recipe that was already tough on calories and made it worse. He took a recipe that was tough on calories and he kept it there and found ingenious ways to add flavor and make it exciting and to fit the narrative of his video, which was to replicate a Krabby Patty. I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thank you for watching. Episode one of Burger Week is in the books. If you like this video, go ahead and beat up that like button for me, Floyd Mayweather it. Would really appreciate it, helps the channel. If you're excited for the rest of Burger Week, subscribe so you don't miss the next two installments. They're gonna be awesome. Uh, I can't wait to share them with you. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for stopping by and catch you guys later.